of here. Well, I am going to be making this pattern by Bruce Worthington. All right, well, let's get started. First, I made a bunch of copies and I actually took it down to a copy place and they were able to put four copies on one sheet. I, I blew it up a little bit. It was on a eight by 11 sheet of paper. So I blew it up to about 15 inches in length and this is plenty of copies to make this pattern. Here's my pile of all the orange colored pieces that I cut out with the scissors. And I have this little piece of cardboard here that I'm going to put them on and then spray them with the glue. And I like to do a little dog ear on the pieces and put them upside down because they're, once I spray them, uh, they're difficult to pick up. And so with a little dog ear, you can grab it like that and then you can put it where it needs to go. So put a little dog ear on the pieces like that. Then sprayed them with 3M77 spray glue. I used a long piece of wood to hold down some pieces that may fly away while spraying. Not all of them try to fly away, but some of them do until the glue is on them anyway. And it only takes a few seconds and it's ready to go on the wood. Yay. Then I put them onto the wood. And this is Paduke, taking in mind the grain of the wood and how I want it to go on the pieces. We'll talk more about that later. Then I cut the pieces out with my Hegner scroll saw using a number five Pegasus modified geometry blade. The woods I used are Paduk, Yellow Heart, Purple Heart, Ebony, Aspen, and some small pieces of mahogany in the eyes. I used some mineral spirits to make it easy to take the papers off. I didn't like the purple heart part of the face, so I remade that piece in yellow heart and thought it looked much better. First, I used the pneumatic drum sander to rough shape all the pieces. I have 100 grit on my sander and it shapes really quickly. I had some issues on the eyes and I had one eye put together wrong, and then I noticed as I was shaping it and I was able to do it the right way, what I did was I had the mahogany piece in the wrong direction. And so then after I figured out that it was in the wrong direction, then when I put it in the right direction, it was too thin. And so I ended up cutting another piece. Much better. But I mess it up one more time before the gig is up. On these wings here, I'm going to make, well, I made this one already where it goes whoop, like that. And so I just marked them like this and I'm gonna go take them over there to the sander. I used the smallest size cylinder for my spindle sander. And then I used the flex drum with 220 grit to soften out the shape. And it worked pretty well. Then I went over all of the pieces with the flex drum that has 220 on it to sand and smooth out all the shapes. Then I used some hand sandpaper with 220 and smoothed off the edges or any spot I couldn't reach with the flex drum. I used some craft bond spray and I sprayed it on the thin plywood that was going to be the backer. Then I moved the project to the backer so it could stick on there just enough to hold it while I traced around it. Then I moved the pieces back off and they're very easy to take off since it's only held on with the craft bond but it holds it just enough snug so that you can trace around it without the pieces moving around. Then I used a red marker and redrew a cut line just a tad inside of the trace line. 
Then I cut that out on the Hegner. It's odd, but cutting this thin stuff is more challenging than cutting thicker pieces of wood. It chatters and gets away from you pretty easily. I'm also too impatient to go as slowly as I probably should. I am who I am. <laughs> Then I sanded off the fuzzies and the sharpness of the edges. Then I put on a coat of Old Master's Poly Gel, wiping it on all of the pieces and then wiping it off after a few minutes. The can says to let it set up for six hours before it is considered dry. So leaving it overnight would take care of that. And here are all of the pieces. of the back of board. Except I just thought of something. Mm. I put a verse on the back and I forgot to show you that, but I put Job 41, 18 through 21, which talks about what sounds to me like a dragon. It says he sneezes and light comes forth. And then it also said that sparks of fire leap from his mouth and flames and it's pretty cool. Let's put it together. Okay, so the belly pieces that look lighter right there, the hands are supposed to be cut out and fit within the belly. I mean, that is what intarsia is, pieces fitting together. But one piece broke, and I tried to glue it, and then I thought I would just cut a new piece. Since the arms went into two pieces of the belly, I cut two new ones. But I made it so that the arms go into one of the pieces, and then the hands just sit on top instead of going inside. The thing I didn't pay attention to was the grain direction, and that is why they look lighter. I couldn't believe I did that, and I didn't even notice it until I had it all glued up and took a picture of it. In the picture, it stuck out like a sore thumb. Intarja is all about paying attention to grain direction, and I guess that is what I get for cheating and having the hands on top of the belly instead of intarja izing them into it. I did figure out with certain lighting, you cannot tell the color difference, but you just can't hide the grain. Then I started gluing it up using tight bond quick and thick. The dragon is all finished. Yay. And Humphrey Dunn and I posted our finished projects on May 16th, which was Bruce Worthington's birthday. And this is a pattern by Bruce Worthington. When Bruce announced a couple months ago that he has lung cancer, Humphrey and I got together and thought, you know what, let's do a project just to show Bruce how much we appreciate him. And then it happened to be his birthday. So that kind of worked out really well. The pattern comes like this on an eight and a half by 11 sheet and I blew it up to about 15 inches tall. And then I also thought that the tail was a little bit sad going down like this. So I redesigned the tail going up this way. And then I added the little bumpies, whatever these things are called. You no, know, so the bumpies and it goes on the tail too. I don't think I mentioned the tail in the video, so I wanted to explain that. And then I also want to talk about some things I think I did mention in the video. And those were my boo-boos. And my major boo-boo is not paying attention to the grains. So what happened was I had the piece that goes here and the hands get cut out and it broke right there. So I thought, well, I can glue it. And I did glue it, but then it broke again. So I thought, well, why don't I just replace this piece? And then I, this piece, was part of it too, so I replaced both pieces. And then what I did is I didn't even, I, I just cut these so that the hands are laying across the top. And I know I mentioned that in the video, uh, but so instead of the hands being in tarja inside, they're just sitting on top. And it wasn't until I glued everything up, I just didn't catch it with the lighting in here. I don't know why, but I took a picture with my phone and I looked at it, I was like, what is wrong with that? And that's when I realized that I had the grain wrong. Like, 
Ah, oh, seriously. I couldn't believe I did that. Sorry, I'm all dirty. We were working in the yard earlier. Anyway, so it, yeah, I messed up on that and it's like, oh, I can't believe it. And another thing I did was this mahogany piece right here, I had gotten everything, put stain on stuff, and then I was putting the pieces all back together and the piece wasn't fitting just right and I was pushing and it broke it in three places. So it's mahogany, which is pretty brittle. So I glued it back together and there was a little chip out of it. So I mixed up some of the sawdust and some wood glue and I made a little patch and you could totally tell it had a patch. I was like, ah. Oh. So I cut a new piece of mahogany. So now I have this nice new piece and I'm putting it back together. And the, the ebony oblong part, this part, wasn't fitting. I had to really, really adjust. And since this is such a thin piece, I adjusted the ebony because that's a big, thick piece. And then it, it has a hole in it where the piece of aspen goes for the highlight, big, huge highlight, catch light. And anyway, um, so I'm adjusting, 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 and I get it to fit. And so then I put it together and I'm like, oh man, that looks off. And what I realized was that I had my ebony piece turned 180 degrees. And so when it was put together, one eyeball was looking up and one eyeball was looking down. I'm like, ah, oh, I can't believe I did that. So now, since I adjusted my ebony piece so much, and I flipped it back to where how it was supposed to be, it didn't fit. So then I had to cut a new ebony piece. So those were some of the issues I had and they were all because I wasn't paying attention. And I figured out too that, that I didn't always have the pattern handy to put the pieces on. I had put the um, backer board over the top of it so I couldn't see the pattern. And I didn't have another pattern sitting by. I should have had this one up here, but I had this down at the house. That would help me immensely. So now I need to just make sure I have my pattern pieces and I put them in the right spot. Oh. Anyway, it was fun making this and it is such a cute little dragon pattern. I love it. And I hope Bruce likes it. And thank you so much for making the pattern, Bruce. It's awesome, just like your other patterns. And thanks to everybody else out there who joined me to watch me while I made this project. And we'll see you next time. Bye.